this course, we're going to create a WordPress storefront with Beaver Themer and WooCommerce. This course includes a library of assets that will allow you to easily work along with me. We're going to create a mock storefront. It's a ladies boutique that sells clothing and accessories. We'll start by learning the ins and outs of how to add products in WooCommerce. We'll learn how to add basic information like product titles, descriptions, and images and how to add variations like size and color to our product. I'll show you how to bulk import products using CSV spreadsheets and how to bulk edit products in the WordPress interface. I'll show you what tools are used for setting up shipping and tax rates and my favorite tools for selling downloads, memberships, and courses. I'll walk you through how to set up coupon sales and upsells, the most common payment gateway extensions, and provide our resource on site security. The second section of this course is all about how to use Beaver Themer to make your entire site look awesome. We're going to learn how the dynamic nature of WordPress works with Beaver Themer to make building out our product pages a breeze. We're going to work with product pages, product category pages, customer pages, we'll build a home page, and I'll share with you some of my favorite third party plugins. Tools like Beaver Builder and Beaver Themer make web design fun and easy. Join me and let's create an e-commerce site with Beaver Themer and WooCommerce. This course is based around creating a mock storefront called Say Chic that's a ladies clothing boutique. I'm sharing the site assets with you and I think you'll find it especially helpful that there's quite a few products already added to the site. So you'll be able to play around with archive page layouts with these categories that I've already pre-configured and experiment with designs without having to do a bunch of data entry first. These things are shared with you on Assistant Pro, which is a product made by Beaver Builder, and you can access them by signing up for a free account on assistant.pro. So after you've finished creating your account, follow the link that I have provided for you and select duplicate. If you don't have the resources to create your own sandbox, WP Beaver Builder has some demo sites that you can use. But these demo sites are wiped out every 24 hours, so it would be preferable if you could set up your own sandbox to work in. And that's what I'm gonna do. Here's my sandbox site, and I have Beaver Builder Page Builder, Beaver Builder Theme, Beaver Themer, WooCommerce, and Assistant Pro all installed on my sandbox. All right, let's log into Assistant Pro and navigate to our course asset library. So one way to import content from Assistant Pro is one item at a time, but I'm just gonna import this whole library. So once I refresh my page, my header and footer are gonna show up here. One thing that we do need to import individually is our theme settings. This is just a fail safe. They want us to accept this prompt that we're gonna be overriding our current theme settings. So now I just need to refresh my page. And there's my styles that I just imported. All right, now we'll open up our customizer and set our homepage to a static page. And it's gonna be this one, Say Chic Homepage. So now we have our course assets all set up. I think it'll be helpful for you to have these assets in your sandbox instead of just starting from scratch. If you'd like to learn more about the ins and outs of using Assistant Pro, we have a course build a better workflow with Assistant Pro. Now let's get started building out our WooCommerce shop with Beaver Themer. So here we are on the products page of our WordPress WooCommerce dashboard. And what I'm gonna demonstrate to you in this video is how to add a simple product. In WooCommerce terms, a simple product is one that doesn't have any variations involved. By contrast, a variable product would be one that has variations. A good example would be small, medium, and large are variations. 
of a variable product. So I'll go over variable products in another video, but this video is about simple products. We can create a new product by selecting add new over here on the left sidebar or up here at the top. And I'm mostly just gonna enter core data here for this product. So that's gonna be a name here, Cindy Hat. There are two areas to add descriptions and we'll see how that plays out on the front end in a different video, but this is called the long description up here. The other place to add a description is down here at the bottom of the page, the short description. And next I'll select the categories that I wanna put this product into. So in this case, it's an accessory and it's also a hat, which is a subcategory of accessories. We can set up new categories from this page, but let's check out the categories page. If you're familiar with WordPress posts, WooCommerce products are organized in the same way. You can create categories within parent categories and you can stack them up in that way so that they're organized into groups and subgroups and subgroups. And the two key pieces of data here are the category name and parent category. The slug will automatically fill in and we can always go back and add more information and refine this later. All right, back to our hat. We're not gonna fill in any product tags at the moment, but tags can be used to display information on the front end. We're gonna add an image and we're gonna set our price. We'll talk more about linked products in another video. For now, I'm just going to leave these fields blank. And same thing goes for shipping and inventory. I'm just going to keep these things blank for now. So there's our simple product. In the next video, we're going to expand on this process and create a variable product. Show you how to add size options to this product. The skirt is a simple product and I set it up just like the hat in the previous lesson. Here's what it looks like on the back end of the site. So what I'll do now is select variable product from this drop down menu here. And from this point, setting up the variations is going to be a two step process. First, we're going to have to add attributes to our product and then we're gonna add variations based on our attributes. We'll name our group of attributes size. And our attributes are separated by a pipe character. And be sure both these boxes are checked. All right, now we'll save. And now that we have attributes, we can create our variations. Now toggle down this drop down menu and select create variations from all attributes. And the last thing we need to do before we update our page is enter prices for our variations. And I'll just fast forward through this section. All right, now we'll just save this and update our page and check out what it looks like on the front end. Okay, so the size variation is looking good. Let's add another variation. So let's pretend that this skirt has the option of a snap or zipper closure. And we're just going to go through the same motions that we went through with the sizes. We're going to name our attribute group. In this case, it's closure. And we'll enter our attribute value separated by a pipe. We need to check this box here, used for variations. Save. So now we've added these two closure options to our variations. So let's check out what this looks like on the front end of our site. So at this point we can choose either closure options, snaps or zippers for all three sizes. 
And this can be configured in different ways so that only certain combinations of attributes are available. So like this configuration would only allow snap closures for small and zipper closures for medium and large. And once you play around with it, it's all pretty straightforward. So I'm going to wrap up this lesson here. And in the next video, we're going to learn about importing multiple products from a CSV spreadsheet. Import a batch of products using the built-in WooCommerce CSV importer. There is a paid extension that will allow you to do a little bit more, but we're just going to use the free importer in this video. I got to this page here by just doing a Google search for import WooCommerce products. And I'll zoom in here to give you a look at the page URL so you can reference that. So now what I'm going to do is scroll down here and follow this link that takes us to GitHub where there is a sample CSV. I'll navigate to the sample products CSV file and I'm going to select raw. Select file save page as here from the main win window in Chrome and I imagine it would be the same in most other browsers too. Now I'm going to stick this CSV file into Google Drive and open it up as a Google spreadsheet. And of course you could use Microsoft Excel instead if you'd rather. So I'm just going to control click on the file and open it up with Google Sheets. This sample file is a great reference, but I'm going to delete quite a few of the options that I'm not going to use because that's going to make the spreadsheet easier to look at and work with. To select multiple columns, click the first column, then shift click the last column in the selection you want to make. Then you can control click or right click to open up this menu and delete the columns that you don't want. So I've deleted quite a few columns. Now I'm just going to clear most of the content out of here, but I'm going to leave the top row just for reference for now. I'm not sure how you do this on a Windows machine, but on a Mac you can select files and you can copy and paste the names into a text editor and then I just do a find and replace to get rid of the file extension. And now I can just paste that into my spreadsheet. I know that I want my product to start at 138 and I can do this trick here where I'll select these two sequential numbers and then I can just drag it out and it will fill it in for me. Okay, I don't actually want description after all, but I know that published and in stock are binary. I'm just going to put one for yes and I'll give everything a $100 price. I'm gonna use this up here as a reference on how to format my categories. Okay. And I'll also add in a couple more categories columns just so that I can have the root categories as well. So I'll have clothing, dresses, formal dresses, clothing, dresses, and just clothing. And it's gonna tick all those boxes for me. And before I add in the image URLs, I'm gonna have to put the images into WordPress. And this part's really straightforward, so I'm just gonna fast forward through it so you don't have to watch all the downloading and copying and pasting. Okay, this is shaping up, so I'm just going to delete these rows here, right click and delete rows. Alright, so now my spreadsheet is ready to be imported into WordPress, so I'm going to go ahead and download it as a CSV file. Now over here from the WordPress products dialog, I can select import and choose my CSV file to import. Thank you. 
And we have this checkbox here that we can select if we want to override data from products that already exist, but in this case, we're just entering new products. This all looks good, so I'm going to run the importer. So it looks like everything came in okay, except for the categories didn't work out how I wanted them to because I wanted them to be categorized under clothing, dresses, and formal dresses. And they're only categorized under formal dresses. So I'm just gonna do a quick bulk edit to resolve that issue. So up here I can filter out just the formal dresses. Now I'm gonna select all of these products and select edit and apply. Now I'll just add the categories that I'd like these to be categorized under. Clothing, dresses, and formal dresses. So that's the rundown on how to bulk import products using a CSV file and how to bulk edit products in the WordPress dashboard. The WooCommerce coupons area of the WordPress dashboard is a submenu item of marketing. It's pretty straightforward how these coupons work. Let's take a look at this one I created, 123 Summer Save. So you see I've set it up as a 15% discount that expires on October 1st, 2022, and it's only valid for products in the summer dresses category. So let's take a look at this coupon on the front end of the site. So I'll add a summer dress to my cart. Now I can apply the coupon code. And it has taken the 15% off of my dress. And now I'm gonna clear my cart and add something to the cart that's not a summer dress and see how the coupon reacts to that. All right, and that's exactly what it's supposed to do. So that's how coupons work. Now let's segue into how sales are set up. Sale prices are set up on product pages right below the regular price. Let's check out what this looks like on the front end. I've created a category for the sale event. I'm gonna show that to you here. It's called Spring Sale 2022. So I have the products that I want to feature in my sale event category, Spring Sale 2022, and then I created a themer layout that will display all of those products. The last thing I want to show you in this video is how to display upsells. So I'm going to go to the back end of this product page and under linked products, I'm going to enter a few upsells. And the next step is to add the themer module to this layout that displays upsells. There it is, product upsells. And there's my three upsells for this product. Are in the WooCommerce shipping settings window. I got here by navigating to the WooCommerce settings menu over here in the sidebar and then clicking up here on the shipping tab. And there are three menu options within the shipping tab. Shipping zones, shipping options, and shipping classes. I'd like to show you how shipping zones and shipping methods work together. Zones are geographical regions, and you can see examples here of different things you can specify, like zip codes, states, countries. 
But instead of adding a new zone, I'm going to scroll down here to this catch-all zone that's already set up for locations not specified in your custom zones. So out of the box, WooCommerce gives us three methods to choose from. Flat rate, free shipping, and local pickup. But we can add more methods by setting up WooCommerce extensions. Let's take a look at some of the products in the shipping, delivery, and fulfillment section of the WooCommerce extension store. WooCommerce Shipping is a free extension that lets you print U.S. Postal Service and DHL labels and get discounted rates on shipping through those service providers. UPS and FedEx both have API extensions that will calculate quotes for you based on your product information. So from the shipping tab of your product pages, you can enter the weight and dimensions of your products, and the FedEx and UPS extensions give you shipping rates based on that info. And there are a lot more shipping extensions to explore in the WooCommerce extension store. Let's return to the WooCommerce settings page so we can talk a little bit about tax settings. So let's head over to the general tab and we're gonna enable tax rates and calculations. Once we do this, we'll be given an additional tab called tax. And here we have a bunch of options that pertain to tax collection. And there are a few sub menu options here as well. Even more so than shipping, tax rates can be very cumbersome to deal with. So let's check out some extensions that will help us manage tax rates. WooCommerce Tax is something that will automatically calculate tax rates for you and it's free. And there are also premium solutions like Avalara that you can explore in the WooCommerce extension store. In this lesson, we're going to go over selling downloads, memberships, and courses. And we're going to start with downloads. I'm going to do the demo with a PDF file. So let's check out this product on the back end of our site. I'm going to indicate here that it's a virtual product, which is going to eliminate any shipping options. And I'm also going to indicate that it's downloadable, which is going to give us this field down here to add a file. The next thing that I'm going to do is name my file and upload it from my media browser. And that's all there is to it. So I'm just going to add this to my cart and show you what it looks like from the customer's point of view. So that's how you sell downloads. Let's move on to memberships and courses. You'll need to use some kind of extension or add on to sell memberships and courses. I'm going to introduce you to some of the most popular solutions. WooCommerce Memberships is a way to protect your content by setting up a paywall where you specify on the back end of your site what content people see based on what they've purchased from you. People can only view certain pages based on what they've purchased, or you can even hide parts of pages so that if somebody's not a logged in customer that's purchased the content, they'll only see part of the page and it will say, oops, wait, you can't see the rest of this content until you've purchased this product and set up a membership. But you can only set up people on an auto pay schedule if you also purchase WooCommerce subscriptions. Here's another product that does the same thing called MemberPress. You can set up protected content, you can set up courses, and you can integrate it with WooCommerce Checkout, or you can just set it up with any other kind of payment system that they offer, like PayPal and Stripe. MemberPress provides an extension that will give you a module to work with in Beaver Builder, which makes it easy to work with. And Beaver Builder has a great blog post about MemberPress. So if you just type MemberPress into the search field on the Beaver Builder blog, you can find that blog post. One of the most common WordPress course platform add-ons are LearnDash and Lifter, and both of these will integrate with WooCommerce Checkout. These are commonly referred to as learning management systems or LMS. 
Basically, they let you add quizzes and assignments and progress flow bars and things like that behind a paywall to your site. WooCommerce does have a free LMS extension called Sensei, which will allow you to add quizzes and assignments. Get this typical LMS page layout that you always see with the menu on the left and the content on the right. You can see here on their landing page. But the free version of Sensei will not put your content behind a paywall. Well, I think that gives you a pretty good idea of how to sell downloadable products. And also some choices for extensions and add-ons if you want to sell memberships and courses. Before you can start accepting payments on your site, you'll need to set up a payment gateway. So here I am in the WooCommerce extension store and I'm going to go over some options for you. Here's the native WooCommerce payment solution, WooCommerce Payments. All these solutions that I'm going to show you don't have an upfront fee, but they charge you a percentage per sale. Stripe is another popular option, and so is PayPal. Another extension I'd like to show you is Amazon Pay. If you're an Amazon Pro seller, then you can use this extension to sell Amazon goods off of your website. I'm going to point you to a resource on the Beaver Builder blog, which is a post about site security. We're at wpbeaverbuilder.com. I'm going to access the blog from the footer, and then I'm going to do a search for security. When you're selling things on your website, it's especially important to keep your site secure. So this resource will give you some tips on how to protect your site. If you're totally new to Beaver Themer, it might be helpful to check out our Beaver Themer course. But I'm just going to give you a quick overview on how Beaver Themer works before we start building our Themer layouts. From the WordPress dashboard, you can add new Themer layouts over here from the Beaver Builder add new submenu item. And there are six different layouts to choose from. The three types of Themer layouts that this course focuses on are singular, archive, and part. And this course has dedicated videos that go into depth on those three types of layouts. But in a nutshell, a singular page is just going to display one product. An archive page will display a collection of products. And a page part will allow us to stick a piece of content before or after another element on the page, like the header or the footer. So singular archive and part are the three types of layouts that we're going to cover in depth, which leaves the header, the footer, and the 404. So this page here has header and footer themer layouts. And these layouts are assigned to every page on my site right now. So if I select the header layout up top here, that will give me access to edit my header, but not the rest of the page. And I can select and edit the footer in the same way. And the content area, which isn't a theme or layout, can be selected and edited from the same drop down menu. So that's how header and footer layouts work. And the last type of layout is the 404, which people will see when they try to visit a URL on your site that doesn't exist. All right, so now that we've gone over the different types of theme or layouts, let's have some fun building out our WooCommerce store with Beaver Themer. A singular layout is a page that just shows one product, as opposed to an archive page, which will show a whole bunch of products, like a bunch of products in one category. So right now we're gonna build a singular layout. Right now we're looking at the default WooCommerce layout and we have no way to edit it aside from using PHP on the back end of the site. So this page has a header and footer themer layout assigned to it, and now we're gonna create a singular layout and assign it to all of our singular pages. So let's navigate over to the Themer Layouts page, which is a submenu under the Beaver Builder sidebar menu. So now we're going to add a new singular layout. And we're going to assign this to display on all of our products. Now we'll publish our page and launch Beaver Builder. And this is just some default content that comes in when you create a new Themer layout for a product page. 
can see up here what it looks like with different products. I'm just going to wipe out all this default content by adding the blank page template. Sites with Beaver Themer installed have these special modules that display dynamic content for WordPress posts and WooCommerce products. So let's take a look at what some of these WooCommerce dynamic modules look like. So I'll just start by putting some of the more common ones on the page so you can get a feel for how this works. By using this drop down menu up here, preview as, we can check out how this layout's gonna look with our other products. Let's take a look at how these images are assigned to this product on the back end of the site. See where it says product image? This is where the main product image is assigned. And then underneath that where it says product gallery, this is where you can add additional product images. Let's look at some other options that we have for image modules. Here under posts, we have the featured image module that we can use, and that's just going to show the main product image. So something that's kind of nice about this one, it doesn't show the magnifying glass. We can also use the attached images module to dynamically display images for our products. So I just set that to display these product gallery images. So that gives you an idea of how you can come up with different themer layouts with these different dynamic themer modules. The other way to add dynamic content to singular layouts is by using field connections on standard modules. And actually some themer modules are just standard modules pre-configured with field connections. For instance, those featured image module it's just a photo module with a field connection already set up for you. Let's grab this text editor module. This little plus sign inside the gray circle indicates that field connections are available for this module. Another way to add dynamic content to your sites is by using short codes. WooCommerce natively offers short codes, and we also get a bunch of bonus short codes with Beaver Themer. So all you do to add content to your page with a short code is just drop in an HTML module, copy and paste the short code into your HTML module, and that's it. Right now we have this layout assigned to all of our products, but we have a lot of options on the back end where we can assign it to just a single product, or we can assign it to a product category, or we can exclude products. So there's a lot of options on how to apply different layouts to different things. So let's say for instance, we're running a promotion on summer dresses. I can duplicate this layout that we've been working with, add a promotional banner. Then I'm gonna rename the femur layout and assign it so that it only shows up on summer dress products. So now all our summer dresses have the themer layout with the promo banner. So the more specific rule, which is the summer dresses category, is overriding the first rule, which is all products. Then all our other products have the first layout that doesn't have a banner on it, and it's assigned to all products. So that's how singular layouts work. These four links up here in the header go to archive pages for various categories. And we're looking at the default WooCommerce layout. We haven't set up any theme or layouts yet for archive pages. So we can't really edit these archive layouts. That's why we only have the option to edit the header and the footer. WooCommerce product archives work the same as blog posts in WordPress. The master archive page is the shop page, which is automatically generated when we install the WooCommerce plugin. Here's that product archive location in Beaver Themer. 
And then there's also WooCommerce archives for categories and tags. When we create a WooCommerce tag or category, WordPress will automatically create a page to match that tag or category. So for instance, all the products that are assigned to the accessories category are gonna show up on this page. Let's create a new archive layout. We'll apply this layout to all of our categories. And we're looking at some default content that comes in whenever we create a new archive layout. So I'm just gonna wipe out the default content by adding the blank page template. So just like with singular layouts, we can add dynamic content to archive layouts by either using themer modules or adding field connections to standard modules. Let's go ahead and check out the archive page themer modules. And you'll notice that these are different from the singular page themer modules. So we have WooCommerce specific modules that we can use. And we also have the set of modules that can be used on blog post archives as well as WooCommerce archives. And I'll preview accessories. So let's just work our way down the list here, starting with archive description and archive title. And these two modules are gonna dynamically display information from your category pages. The archive description module is just a heading module with the field connection already set up. And just like any other module, we have a whole bunch of options on how to stylize things. You can learn all about stylizing modules from our page builder course. And these next items are really just different starting points for the standard post module. And I'll just toggle through so you can see the different layout views available. And there's a ton of different settings for the style and content. I'm gonna turn off the author D and description. And there's a lot of different settings to explore. We can get a lot of looks and layouts out of the post module. You might recognize this breadcrumb module from the singular video. It does the exact same thing here. The products module is another configuration of the post module. It's set up to look nice with products. We can also use field connections to display dynamic content on archive pages. The most common ones I use for archive pages are heading and text editor. This little plus sign in the gray circle indicates that field connections are available for the module you're using. And sometimes with archive pages, it's nice to just add in some decorative elements like images and separators using the standard modules too. It's great to have dynamic content fill in the page because it's so easy to set up, but it's also nice to have the flexibility that we can make hand-tailored designs with themer layouts as well. So let's say I don't want to use dynamic content on a product because I want a really detailed, highly stylized design. I can just create a themer layout and assign it to that one page, and I don't need to use any dynamic modules on that page. What I'd like to do in this demo is stick a dress size chart on all of the pages for the products in the dresses category. So another way we could approach this is by making a singular layout that has the dresses size chart on it and then assigning that to the dresses. But I think for this task, making a page part layout is a really great approach. So I'll start by making a new themer layout. And this is gonna be a part layout. Now we have all these choices of where we can stick our content. The pages that this part layout is going to be assigned to are really simple, so there's a few different options that would work. In this case, I think after content makes a lot of sense. Now I'll assign this to all of the pages in the product category dresses. And 
Then I'll add my size chart to the layout. And now all of my products in the dress category have this size chart below the content. So that's how page part layouts work. Another great way to stylize your WooCommerce product pages with Beaver Themer. When we install the WooCommerce plugin, a handful of account pages are automatically generated. For instance, the account page, the cart page, all these pages are accessible from the pages section of the WordPress dashboard. The content on these pages is pulled in by short codes. This is what the short code looks like in the Gutenberg editor. And if I launch Beaver Builder, the same short code's gonna be popped into a text editor. On the My Account page, there are multiple tabs that don't show up as separate pages on the Pages section of the WordPress dashboard, just part of the magic that happens on the back end of the site. We can stylize our text editor module like any other Beaver Builder module. And we can also stylize the row that the module sits inside if we wanna change it to full width or we wanna add a background image or color or gradient or something like that. If we want to change the content inside of these account sections, that's done by modifying the PHP on the back end of the site. A common modification people like to make is the welcome text here on the My Account dashboard. You'll need to be able to access the files on your site through FTP. Be sure to make copies of any files that you're modifying just in case you want to revert back if something goes wrong. And here's the file path where you can find the PHP file that that text is on. And there's some directions up here that tell us a specific file path on where to stick the modified file within our theme folder. I'll just add a little bit of text here. And just like the directions told me to, I put my dashboard.php file inside of a folder called my account and that folder is inside a folder called WooCommerce. Now we can refresh the page and see the text that I just added. If you'd like to develop your skills so that you can tackle some of the more complicated WooCommerce customization tasks, there's a couple resources I can point you to. One of them is this course on Udemy Advanced WooCommerce Step-by-Step -step. and there's a comprehensive course on businessbloomer.com Learn how to customize WooCommerce without unnecessary plugins. We offer a full course on Beaver Builder Page Builder Layouts, but I still wanted to do a video for this course on Page Builder Layouts just to put together some ideas on how we might stylize something like a home page or a page that doesn't use any field connections. Everything up in the header is a theme or layout assigned to every page on the site. And down here is the body of our home page. This first row is set to full width with a background image and fixed width for the content area. Then within the row is a heading module, a text module, and a button module. The button goes to a product archive page that has products that are category spring closeout sale. The next row has a fixed width and inside the row is a text module, a button module, and a photo module. This next row has a background image and inside of it is a heading module and a post module. And we've seen a lot of the post module in the themer layouts videos. This time the post module is used to display blog posts. And this row here with the black background is a text module next to a menu module. 
there's an area under appearance in the WordPress dashboard where we can set up menus. And there's also a place to add menus in the theme customizer. These settings are gonna vary depending on what theme you're using. I'm using the Beaver Builder theme. The reason I'm pointing this out to you is because these lists of product category and product tag archive pages, they're only available here from the customizer. So if you were to set up your menu back from the appearance page, you would have to enter all of these things as custom links. All right, moving along down the page, and this guy here is a content slider. And these can be really nice on shop pages. Now I'm going to move on and talk about some add-ons that I think you might enjoy hearing about. Two of the more established companies that offer add-ons for Beaver Builder are Ultimate Add-ons and Powerpack. Once you have these things installed, they're going to show up here in your Beaver Builder modules. Here's an example of a Powerpack module called Product Category. And then I've tweaked the settings on this already to get it to match my site. I'll just click around the settings a little bit to show you what that looks like. Now let's take a look at an ultimate add-ons module. This module is called Advanced Posts. I use this one quite a bit on blog posts, but it also works on WooCommerce products. And if you have a smaller storefront, this can be a fun way to allow customers to sort results. If you have a larger storefront and you're looking for an add-on that will allow customers to sort and filter, there's a product called Grid Builder that offers an add-on for Beaver Builder. Here's a look at their demo site, and we have a tutorial on how to use Grid Builder with Beaver Builder on Beaver Builder's YouTube channel. Facet WP is a product similar to Grid Builder, and they also offer an add-on for Beaver Builder. The next product I want to show you is called Layer Slider. It's a fun way to create layered animations. Here's a look at one of their demos for a product feature. Your slider can also be a good way to make nice looking pop-ups. Another product similar to Layer Slider is Slider Revolution. Both Layer Slider and Slider Revolution can easily be used with Beaver Builder by sticking a short code into an HTML module. I'm going to take just a moment to digress away from front-end development and talk about a tool that's used on the back end of our sites. This next product is a popular SEO plugin called Yoast. And you can use it to optimize any of your WordPress pages for search engines. Once you've installed Yoast, all of your pages will have a spot on the back end where you can enter your SEO information. And this includes your product pages and product archive pages as well. Part of what makes Beaver Builder so great is the awesome support and user community. We have a course library, which this course is part of. We have an extensive knowledge base updated regularly. We have a variety of user groups to choose from, including our Beaver Builder community, a Slack channel, a Facebook user group. We have an extensive blog that's constantly growing. I encourage you to subscribe to our newsletter so that you can receive updates on that. And we have a fantastic YouTube channel. Thank you so much for being a part of the Beaver Builder user community.